I hate dumb people. All right. And unfortunately, they come in every color creed there is. It's dumb people I hate. All right. And damn it, that's not a protected class. So we can discriminate against dumb people all the time. I've actually told people before when they've asked me questions, I tell, you know, I'm actually dumber for hearing that. I've wasted my time. Right. So, sure. Do you think that with the ever changing way of um, how people are viewing like sex and um, sexual orientation now, that this is going to change even more so within the next couple of years? Because now we have further extended our male to female past that. It's just, you know, something else going on right now. So I don't want to be an old grumpy man answer to that or you want the teacher's answer to that i want um, the real answer to it <laughs> if lord only if the government would call me to get the real answers i could solve the, all these problems but my educated real answer guess is yes they will they will have to do something because of the populace trending towards X, you know, male, female, X, even the driver's license now allows you to do this, all right? Um, the National Association of Realtors says, as a guideline, you should not discriminate based on orientation or preference. Even though it's technically not a protected class under the federal, they mean male and female. Now, the problem that you're running into is this, that Housing and Community Development Act Define the segregation or the discrimination as male and female. So now here's my question back to you. The law says male and female. If somebody now says, well, I, I'm neither or I'm both, okay, then you're not protected because the law only protects male and female. And you're telling me you're neither one? I'm going to discriminate against you then. So it could go the other way unless they modify this to protect this fluid dynamic change of what people see. The actual law protects females or males, does not protect the X category yet. So, Would the yeah, Equality I'm, Act, sorry. Do what? Would the Equality Act be the next, like, generation of that like that i mean it hasn't been enacted everywhere but isn't that kind of coming the equality I act would is say that it eventually is going to have to because of the quote unquote reverse loophole that i just mentioned you know if someone says well under the fair housing act you violated my rights no wait a minute you're telling me you're not a female or a male and that's what the Fair Housing Act protects right now, is male and female. And they call it out. All right. Now, the grumpy old man in me is going to tell you, you are born with two X chromosomes or an XY chromosome. It doesn't matter what you think you are. You're either male or female. That's all there is. There's only, it's only two choices. All right. Now, the other smart ass in me wants to do this. And I'm literally waiting for this to happen. How can how come I cannot identify as a 65 year old male and get my social security today? All right. We are allowing all this other to go on. Okay, then I want to change my age. And I want Social Security because even though I'm only 57, I feel 65 and I identify as 65 and I hang out with guys that are 65. So I identify as a 65 year old. I should qualify for Social Security. Or let's go the other way. I want to identify as a 14 year old female and go into the locker room. I mean, you see problems that could come up with that and we could spend a whole hour talking about that and how i 
just like to stir trouble. Because if we are allowing one gender to say they are the other gender and they identify and they get protected and they should be treated like that other gender, then why can't we do it with age? Why can't we do it with any other thing? Well, maybe not everybody shares my opinion on that then. So I still think the social security thing would be cool. I want my social security. I'm I'm 65. So that is the advertising component. And once again, Jamon, we go back to this whole thing about we all understand the warm and fuzzy of what the Fair Housing Act is. Don't discriminate. Just do the right thing. But really, the rule says there's no way to do the right thing. All right. Now, appraising over on the next page. Basically, all of these fit in the same category. You can't appraise a property and give it a different value based on one of the seven protected classes. You couldn't say something like, well, this house, if it were in the Jewish neighborhood, it would be worth more, but in this neighborhood, it's only worth X. That is using a protected class as a basis for the appraising the property. Redlining. Redlining is where it, usually, it came about because mortgages and insurance companies would literally go into a neighborhood and draw a circle on a map with a red marker and then tell their associates, do not write a loan or do not insure property in that circle because of the blank. They would redline a circle around an area geographically and then tell people not to do things in there. Don't write insurance policies. Don't give mortgages. All right. Now, the mortgage industry has this thing called reverse redlining. Reverse redlining is where they would do the same thing, take a map, draw a circle around it, and then intentionally target the people inside of there with high interest rate loans, high cost loans, because, oh, those people have no choice, so they'll take this loan. That's called reverse redlining. That's also a violation in the mortgage industry. Same thing, only one excludes people in that circle. The other targets those people. There's that section I we started this out with about this being an effects law, not an intent law. So you've got to be careful because you might say something to effect of, well, they're all fast and somebody else hears something different than what you really meant. All right. It's not an intent. You cannot defend yourself by saying, I did not mean to. Doesn't matter. All right. Now, terrorism, obviously, we are not supposed to profile. The government profiles, the TSA does. Do you guys know who Harold and Kumar are? I love watching them. Cal Penn and John Cho. Cal Penn is Middle Eastern. John Cho is Asian. And they do this show called, they did one called Harold and, uh, I just, Harold and Kumar go to Guantanamo Bay. In the one scene, Cal Penn, the Middle Eastern guy, is standing in line to go into the security point at the air. And he looks down the line and all the guys in the line are white males in three-piece suits and him. And TSA walks down the line and they grab him and they're like, Random security check, and they pull him out, and he's like, random my ass. All right? So don't profile. Now, on page 355, 356, the enforcement, there is a uh, fair housing hack is administered uh, by HUD. If you think you have been a victim of fair housing, you can submit to HUD a complaint, and there's the address actually right there, I believe they give it to you, um, that you can file. When a complaint is filed, HUD has 100 days to determine 
if there actually has been a violation. If they believe there has been a violation, they will go to the parties and the first thing they try is this thing called conciliation. Conciliation, if you know the Latin, conciliate means to apologize or agree or so literally what they're going to try and do first is bring the two parties together and say, look, tell me you didn't intentionally discriminate on this guy. And the landlord would typically go, yes, I did not mean that. I'm sorry. And the guy that filed the complaint would say, OK, I agree that maybe it was a mistake and we will hug it out. and Move on. That is called conciliation. Basically, they're trying to get the parties to agree that it was not intentional and everything was is OK. If conciliation does not work, they would move to the next level. And this is where they would bring in this thing called an ALJ, the Administrative Law Judge. The ALJ is probably the worst kind of judge to have because they are the judge, the jury, and the executioner all in one person, all right? And then what the ALJ does is listen to both sides of the story, and then he will make a decision if it is or is not a violation. And then if it is a violation, in this particular case, he's kind of the executioner, but HUD has already determined what the penalties are. Now, I have been told that this is a question on the exam, which I think is dumb as hell, because I know these numbers have changed over the years. The first time that you get fined, what's it say, 19,987. Why they would ask that seems stupid to me. When I started teaching this, the first fine was like 11 grand. Now it's gone up. And then as you can see, it it goes up to where it could potentially go up to your third violation is $98,000. If you have been found guilty of discriminatory practice three times in five years, Dude, get another job, all right? Because that obviously means you're stupid. And once again, I'm an intelligentist. If you have discriminated three times in five years and been caught three times, what's that probably mean you've done all the other times you didn't get caught, all right? So, that's what happens is the ALJ, and then the, those are the fine numbers. Now, here's the problem. You can also be fined civilly or taken to civil court. If it is a violation of the Fair Housing Act of or the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which is which class, race, it is a federal lawsuit out of the gate. If you are in violation of a race discrimination case, that is a federal lawsuit out of the gate. You're going to federal court. If you lose, you can be fined. Here's the word, you ready? Unlimited amount of punitive damages. The book even mentions it, unlimited punitive damages. What does the word punitive mean? Punishment. That is your punishment for violating the, the rule. Theoretically, you could be sued for $100 million because it's an unlimited amount. And I told you that at the beginning, this is not one they play with. 
your first violation, if it happened to be a race violation, could go to federal court and be fined punitively a hundred million unlimited damages. How does one come up off a hundred million if they get sued if they don't have a hundred million? How does that I don't know. Never been to find a hundred million. <laughs> they ain't over. I would assume now some Arizona missions insurance policies cover discrimination cases. Some do not. You got to know what your carrier is carrying. Um, they probably have a max on your policy. So my assumption would be you would be making some kind of compensatory payment for the rest of your life. All right. You would probably be making a quote unquote house payment towards a hundred million the rest of your life. I don't know. I'm not a practicing attorney. Um, I wonder if I wonder if you can file bankruptcy and declare that as a debt. I don't know that. There are some debts you can't declare in bankruptcy. Student loans, for example. You file bankruptcy, student loans can't go into a bankruptcy. You maintain those even after you file bankruptcy and it's discharged. I wonder if court awardings would be similar. Otherwise, Cameron, the answer would be just file bankruptcy and, and discharge it if you can. I don't know. I'll look that up. That's a good thing. Curious minds want to think. I'm going to look that up. Hold on. I wrote that down. I want to look that up for you. Now, some states have a state agency. Indiana is one of them. We have an Indiana Department of Housing. All right. So if you feel you've been aggrieved and you file a claim with HUD, HUD will kick it back down to the state of Indiana and let Indiana handle it first. And it's the same kind of penalties. They still have a conciliatory uh, meeting. They could go to the ALJ. They just let the states handle it before the feds get to it, all right? Now, on the last page there, what does this mean for you? Well, we have kind of touched on this several times. What this means for you is you could have lose your way of earning a career because of this. You could actually lose your license. On top of getting sued for $100 million, the real estate commission could actually take your license for that. So you have to understand that there are consequences for acting in this manner way beyond the $100 million, right? <laughs> lose my license, $100 million. Both potentially all right so there are a lot of things that can happen you can be fined through the commission you can have your license suspended you can have your license revoked so not only do you now owe 100 million you also have no way of earning that money to pay that so they do not kid with this law as much as i have kind of joked around in this class understand this is a very serious law and that people can get fined a lot of money and lose your license practice smartly and like i say treat everybody the same and only go for a green if you got money i don't care if you're a martian that's seven foot tall you're my client all right See, everybody thinks Martians are little green men. They're actually seven foot tall. That's my guess. Any questions on fair housing? All righty then. Going once, going twice.